to me. And I don't, I might not sing it the way people sing it, but I'm gonna sing it from my heart. When I was young, I gave God my heart, and I told Him to lose the way. Oh, the fellow's been rough, it's been mighty tough, I ain't going nowhere, I'm here to stay. There was many. But now they're going astray, but I'm still holding on. I'm still holding on to his name. I say when I was young, I was 16, I gave God my heart. And I told him to leave the way. Well, the father's been wrong. It's been mighty tough. And I ain't going nowhere. I'm here to stay. There was many started out with me. But now they are going astray. But I'm still. So true. 
Hallelujah. You may be seated. Anybody have that? Yeah. 
So I'm going to sing this song and turn it into a
For today's grace, Lord, we thank you just to have life, to be breathing on today. Lord, we don't want to ever take it for granted that you owe us one more day or one more hour. But we take the time, and you say redeem the time because the days are evil. Lord, we redeem this day, Lord, by using it to gather in the house of prayer. Thank you for bringing us over these highways. Thank you for the prayer that you allowed us to have. Lord, it's just so good to come in and hear Pop Henderson praying, reaching out. Lord, it's a blessing in the service. Lord, I appreciate your spirit leading us here. All the praises, all the testimonies, Sister Hunter singing, Lord, just bringing this grace in through the song service. How you moving for Sister LaDonna's son. Lord, continue to draw him by your spirit. Lord, we ask you for grace to be saved. Give him the real Holy Ghost. Baptize him with fire. Oh, this is what we're reaching out for, Lord, in this hour. Lord, thank you for Sister Hunt moving for her nephew and great nephew. Lord. Such a good God. Lord, I don't know if they're saved, but I know your love and care reaches to them as well as to every one of us. You're so good to move for Rhonda. Lord, move for her daughter. Lord, break these yokes, these circumstances. We get ourselves in and get our lives in a mess sometimes, but you're the one that sorts out the mess. Lord, many of us here can testify of the mess we were in before you saved us, before you intervened, before you stepped in. Lord, we ask you to move for that daughter. Lord, we ask you to break up this relationship, this toxic demon relationship. Get in and break it up with peace, peacefully. Break it up, Lord, in the name of Jesus. We cry out against this thing. Lord, we ask you for mercy on today. We ask you for grace, Lord, to be saved, to call on the name of Jesus. For whosoever shall call on the Lord shall be delivered. Oh, deliver in this hour. Deliver your people. Deliver their children and their grandchildren. Reach out, Lord, even in the other states, in the Florida and Texas and Arizona, and save these children. Reach up there, Lord, in New York, and save Eric, Lord, and break the yoke of his life. Lord, reach wherever our children may be, wherever our grandchildren may be. Lord, we're not going out without a fight. Lord, you got some fighters here today. You got some watchmen on the wall that will not cease day and night to cry out to God. Lord, those that's here in St. Louis, God save them and deliver them from the evil of this city, from the evil of these streets, from the evil of these relationships, from the evil of this day. Break this your brother, Holy Ghost on the day. Lord, raise up my prayer warrior. Oh, my Holy Spirit. Oh, by the Holy Ghost. Oh, issue four. Issue four from this house of prayer. Waters to the ankles. Waters to the knees. Waters to the loins. Waters to the waist. Waters to swim in. A river that cannot be passed over. Lord, send rivers of living water out of this house of prayer. Out of these men and women of God. By the Holy Ghost. Oh, by the Holy Ghost. In the name of Jesus, we break the yokes and bind every demon power, even off the prayer this week. We pray, Lord, that you bless us in the prayer. Bless the bereaved family, the Parkers, Lord, and the Lord Burses, Lord, and the Thomases. Lord, we ask you for their strength. In Jesus' name, amen. Praise the Lord as you see it. Amen. I thank the Lord for the Holy Ghost. Don't you feel God's spirit? Amen. Sister Hunter always adds something to the service. Amen. I tell you, she got that Holy Ghost that goes way back. Make you feel like your own grand again. <laughs> I'm just too old. That's all it is. I'm just too old. I see Brother Randolph. Brother Randolph sneaked in late. Amen. I was wondering. I said, how long is he going to go for? I had to call. 
Amen. He's working that ship. But amen. And he's persevering. Sometimes you gotta go a little extra and get a hold of the Lord. I tell you, it's worth it. This is our life right here. And it, it burdens me that people aren't concerned about their soul. You know, I got a message last week. Somebody said they wouldn't come to church until they could come without wearing a mask. But you know, you go to work with a mask on. If they say you can't work unless you had a mask on, you go to work with a mask on. Yes, sir. Amen. You go to you, you wear a mask to gain your living. But this is your life right here. This is the true God and eternal life. Amen. You can't replace this if you gotta wear a mask. Amen. If you gotta wear an ankle bracelet, oh hallelujah. If you gotta wear a monitor. Amen. If you gotta wear a straight jacket, wear it to come to church. Amen. It's worth it. For this kingdom of God. Tell you, Rhonda say she ain't saved. I'll take her word for it. But man, when she testified, I feel what I used to feel when Mother Henderson testified. Mother Henderson could light it up, couldn't she? Amen. Amen. God knows how to get a hold of his people. Sometimes it's our troubles that make us more than our good times. Amen. He said, I've chose you in the furnace of affliction. And sometimes we hate going through. But going through sometimes is the best thing for us. I've learned so much about God by the things I've suffered. Even Jesus himself, the Son of God, he learned obedience only one way. He learned it by the things that he suffered. You learn in your suffering. You learn God. You know anything about God, you get to suffer. It drives it home, don't it? It opens up your spirit and say, God, I remember, amen, what you've been sowing into me. Amen. So never complain about your suffering. Praise God even in the midst of suffering. Somebody say amen. 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 It's for your good. All things work together for good to them that love the Lord. I believe there's some people here that love the Lord. I love the Lord. Amen. But you get to going through sometimes. Kind of start questioning, yeah. you know, why you're on this road. But I'm glad I'm on this road. Yes, sir. Amen. Suffering creates crossroads. Mm -hmm. And you have to make a decision. You have to make a choice. Mm -hmm. And you don't just make it one time. Come on, say, I made my choice with Jesus in 1981. I did too. But I chose him, amen, this morning as well. Yes. You have to continue to make yes. a choice. Amen. Because the devil's going to always bring temptation for the crossroads. Yes. In your path, and you have to choose the Lord yes, every day of your life. Amen. Especially when you get to going through. Somebody say amen. amen. Especially when you get to going through. Right. You know, the Lord told him, you know, John the Baptist testified that Jesus must increase, but I must decrease. Y'all look over me today. I'm trying to save my voice. I got a funeral Tuesday. And we want to have some voice because, man, you get centered there. You sure want to be able to preach. Yes. Amen. Somebody say amen. amen. And we got the prayer this week, so I'm trying to save my voice. Amen. So I may not, I may try to keep it low key today because some weekends I lose my voice. Yes. Amen. But John got to going through, you know, and uh, he began to question what God had told him and what God had shown him. So the Bible say he sent his disciples to Jesus and say, "Are you he?" That is to come, or do we look for another? Now, God had already told him, on whom you see the Spirit descending like a dove and remaining, that same is he. And John began to tell them, Behold the Lamb of God. Told him twice in John that take away the sin of the world. He knew who he was, but when he got in prison and he knew that he was about to face his death, amen, he began to question. And he sent his disciples to Jesus and said, Go and ask him, Are you he? that we're looking for. Now, God already showed him. He said, are you here that we're looking for or should we look for another? And notice what Jesus answered his disciples. He said, go tell John again. Y'all yes. read that in the Bible. Every jot, every tittle means something. He said, I, I've already shown John, but go tell him again. Amen. What you see. Amen. The blind see. Amen. The deaf hear, the dead are raised up, and the poor have the gospel preached unto them. Then he said something else. He said, blessed is he who shall not be offended in me. What does that mean? That means blessed is he that doesn't stumble when he starts suffering. See, the Bible says he that sowed seed among the thorns, say immediately it sprung up. 
Notice what he said. He said, but when tribulation or persecution arise because of the word, amen, immediately they are offended. Amen. So people are failing right now. And it ain't your natural life, right? I'm telling you, it ain't your natural life. It's the kingdom of God in you. The devil's trying to beat out of you. Amen. But we get to make a choice. Every time the devil comes, there's no temptation that's taking you. No trial, no test, no tribulation, but such as is common to man. But God is faithful, and he will not allow you to be tried above that you're able. But he will, with the temptation, make a way to escape that you can bear that you can bear it. It's the kingdom of God the devil wants to beat out of our children, yes, out of our sons, out of our daughters. Yes, what you raised them up and taught them. Yes. Amen. And he's trying to beat it out of you too. Yes, sir. Amen. So you gotta make a choice every day of your life. God, I'm not gonna be offended. I'm not that word offended means cause to stumble or to fall. It don't mean oh, oh I'm so arrogant or oh, I'm so I'm so upset. You know, we use the word offended to mean upset. Or angry, but when the Bible says offended, it means to cause to fall or to cause to stumble, to be off ended, to fall over. And Jesus said, Blessed is he who shall not be offended, caused to stumble because of my ministry. Yes. Amen. So he had to reaffirm John in the prison house. Mm -hmm. And John knew he was going to the chopping block. Amen. He was a prophet. Mm -hmm. He prophesied before he was locked up, Jesus is going to increase and I'm going to decrease. Yes. He knew his ministry was coming to an end. But if Jesus wasn't the one, then he knew he had some more time. So he said, and said, go ask him, is he really the one? But he had already knew he was the one. But you get to suffering, sometimes you start to doubt in what God has already told you. But the Lord means what he says. Amen. He meant what he told you. When he said cross over to the other side of the lake, he meant cross over to the other side of the lake. What happened? The storm rose. The winds began to blow. But that word of God had already spoken and said, we're going to the other side. What happened when the storm came up? They began to doubt that word that they heard. The word had already said, let's cross over to the other side. He didn't say, let's go to the middle and drown. He said, we're going to the other side. But when that storm came, they began to doubt that word that they heard. You always have to go back. That's why the Bible said, let us give the more earnest heed to the things which we have heard, lest at any time we let them slip. And the devil's trying to snatch that word of God, because if he can snatch the word of God out of your heart, Heart, he snatches faith out of your heart and if he snatches faith out of your heart he snatches victory out of your heart because the victory that overcomes the world is what faith. it's your faith can you still believe God in the spite of suffering amen and everybody's suffering something everybody right now is going through the trial of their faith amen and how many is going to hold on amen. oh hallelujah All right, Lord. what about the rest of y'all Amen. I'm holding on to Jesus. I made Jesus my choice, Amen. and I'm still choosing him today. Amen. Amen. I'm still choosing him today. So we're going to be here praying this week, tomorrow, and Monday, and Tuesday. Tomorrow is Monday. <laughs> I'm praying. I told my wife, I said, honey, I'm really tired. About four years ago, we bought some of that Prevagen. Y'all remember? Y'all know what that Prevagen is? Y'all young people don't know, but anybody over 50 know what I bought it. I was like, I ain't taking that. that. It was expensive. It was like $30. I, ain't, I don't know what's in that. I put it up in the closet four years ago in the cabinet. I forgot all about it. Yesterday, I told my wife, I said, I might need to start taking that privilege. <laughs> Man, sometimes I forget stuff. It's, it's a memory aid. It's supposed to help old people remember stuff. Y'all ain't seen the commercials. I guess they only put it on doing old people programming the news and Jeopardy. <laughs> they used to always have when I had TV. You know, they used to always advertise that privilege because I would always what they do. Okay, I would always watch Jeopardy when I had TV, and so they always had those old people commercials. <laughs> Praise the Lord, and young. Amen. And young. All right. Praise the Lord. But anyway, we are uh, gonna be here praying uh, Monday, Tuesday, and Wednesday. I know flesh don't like it. But we need more praying up here. Yes, sir. Amen. We got a lot of people down there that don't take advantage of it. But we need more praying up here. And I told them, amen, we're going to make it available to you. We got Brother Hunt to drive a church bus. Appreciate that. Sister Hunt, you stand too. Amen. They got an anniversary tomorrow. How many years y'all been married? 37. I don't say I guess it's been that long. I was thinking y'all got married. I'm oh, like, help. How old am I? How old are you? Oh, never mind. <laughs> Man, we're getting old. They're going to be up here helping us. 
Amen. So if you want to get to prayer, there's a way to get to prayer. Amen. So Brother Hunt's going to drive. We'll be here at noon uh, Monday and Wednesday. We had to cancel Tuesday afternoon funeral for the, not, not funeral, Lord, what am I saying? Tuesday afternoon prayer for the funeral. So we won't have prayer Tuesday afternoon, but we will have prayer Tuesday night. Somebody say, we will have prayer Tuesday night. All right now. People get the message out. Say, Pastor, cancel Tuesday altogether. No, he didn't. No, he didn't. He only canceled Tuesday at noon. Amen. See, people get, you got the wrong message already, Sister Brown. See, I'm telling you, man, council service, it fly. People be calling me and they see one flake of snow. They say, Pastor, we haven't served. I ain't saying nothing until I'm sure. Because if I let out even a peep that I'm thinking about closing service, they get the word around. I just shut down the whole church till the, till the spring come. <laughs> I ain't saying nothing until I'm sure. Praise the Lord. So anyway, we are going to have to cancel the noon prayer. Tara's funeral is going to be uh, Tuesday, 10 o'clock wait, and 11 o'clock funeral at the church in the country. Uh, I'm sure all of you have heard now that Tara passed last Sunday. So uh, those that want to come down and support the family, amen. We've really been uh, proud of our son, Brother Larry. Losing your mama, that's something else. That's something else. But he's been hanging in the prayer and the services. And then Sister Nikki, of course, as well, losing her sister. Praise Lord. Pray for Brother Jim. Uh, I haven't talked to him. I probably called him today, but I haven't uh, talked to him. But, you know, people get to going through. They need the support of the saints. Amen. Amen. So if you uh, feel like coming down, I know that's a long trip. Amen. But uh, if you feel ready to come down, and I know a lot of times people down there don't come to funerals up here, but we need to support one another if we can. Amen. And it's not always possible. It's not always possible, but we'll be there at uh, 10 o'clock for the wake Tuesday and 11 o'clock for the funeral. We'll be right back here for prayer Tuesday night from 6 to 7, Monday night from 6 to 7. Big sister's going to drive the church bus from the country to help us out on Monday. She won't be able to drive on Tuesday. On Wednesday, she'll be preaching. Thank God for the help. Amen. She'll be preaching Wednesday night, but we'll be here praying. Amen. I say this every time we have prayer. I, I need to have it more often. And I just, I just can't get it done. But the Lord's going to give me some wisdom. Because I'm going to tell you, the Bible say, as you see the day approaching, he said, get in the house of God more. That's right. You know, and we know we lost our Tuesday night with Sister Auntie. And I'm praying about how to get these doors open. Amen. The owner was here that night. Brother Brown called me one day. He said, Pastor, we ain't going to be able to have service. They had all this torn down in front. And he got hold of somebody. Brother Brown did. Sister Brown. Got hold of somebody, and so when I got here, the owner was here. They was clearing out for everything, so I thank God for that. But I was able to talk to the owner. Uh, he said, "Well, how often y'all have service?" I said, "Well, just uh, Sunday morning." He said, "That's all y'all have?" I said, "Well, we used to have Tuesday." He said, "How come y'all don't have Tuesday?" He said, "Looks like you got some good people here." He said, "How come y'all don't have Tuesday?" <laughs> and you know, I was a little embarrassed. <laughs> Amen. So y'all pray with us that the Lord get the doors open. Yes, sir. You know, at least once a month, do something, yes, have something. Yes, yes, Amen. We need to be in the house of God Amen. so much more Amen. right now. Amen. Amen. I wish I could put impress on people how crucial it is. We got so many people out sick in the country. It ain't even funny. I can't even remember names just today. I ain't praying for nobody personally because I don't want nobody mad. But there's so many people. Amen. But when you can get to the house of God, we need to do that. Is that the truth? Amen. Amen. Because I tell you, the enemy is trying to destroy us. And whether you know it or not, your strength don't just come from the Lord. Your strength comes from your brothers and your sisters. Amen. Am I right about that? Yes. You get strength from other people yes. of like precious faith. Even yes. Solomon knew that. Yes. Amen. He said, how can one? He said, when you got two, they have a good reward for their labor. And if somebody fall down, they got somebody to help them up. Is that your mind? Amen. He said, if you're two in the bed, say they have heat. But how can one be warm alone? <laughs> he said, you need somebody with you. Amen. You need somebody with you. Even Jesus wanted somebody to pray with him. Amen. So we need some help. Don't ever think you can stand by yourself. Don't ever think that you don't need the help of the saints. And I never made that mistake. Amen. I always recognize I needed to be in the house of God because I need help. I get strength when I come. I get strength. People singing like Sister Hunter was singing this morning. Amen. People praying like Pop Henderson and some of that. It was a good spirit of prayer. We laid 
I think we always got something to do on Sunday morning. I don't know what about it is about Sunday morning. We was late, but when I came in, it was a good prayer going on. Thank y'all. Well, it's going to be quiet now. I think I ruined the service talking about the prayer. No, you did. You did all right. Amen. But I'm going to try to save my voice because sometimes in the prayer, we get to scream and holler. Now, Tuesday and Wednesday, I can scream as much as I want, but today and tomorrow, I'm going to try to take it easy on my voice because, amen, people think I like preaching funerals. I don't. But when you got sinners there, I'll take any situation where unsaved people is a chance to hear the gospel. I don't understand some of these preachers that, you know, supposed to have a burden, a Jesus burden, and you get a room full of sinners, and you start preaching how somebody flapping around up in heaven. Hey, man, they was a murderer, a drug dealer, prostitute, all in one, and you got them flapping around up in heaven. First of all, that ain't your business. Second of all, you don't know, because to his own master, he stands or falls. So you got to preach to those that's there. Amen. And those that's there, they need the word, especially if they don't go to church. Amen. Amen. So I have a burden to preach to sinners, but I don't love preaching funerals. Amen. But if there's some sinners there that need to hear the word of God, amen. I'm your man. I'll take it. There's so many preachers just preach nonsense. Amen. Preachers don't have a burden, but souls are lost right now. Yes, sir. Amen. And I'll tell you what, I'm sticking on this rock. I'm trying to get to this message today, but I'm staying on this rock. Amen. Because the church don't exist except to save the lost. Amen. Jesus came to seek and to save that which was lost. Is that in y'all body? Amen. Amen. And if, if you ain't got a burden for somebody else's soul, uh, get saved. Amen. Get saved. And God will give you a real burden for somebody. Amen. And he may not everybody, but somebody. You got to have a burden for somebody other than yourself. Yes. Amen. Because there's people dying all around you, especially y'all in St. Louis. People dying next door, laying out in the street in front of your house, dying, and you ain't got no kind of burden whatsoever. There's something wrong with you. There's something wrong with you. It was something wrong with that priest that walked by that, that man laying in the gutter. Amen. It was something wrong with that Levite walked by on the other side. But Jesus said that was a good Samaritan. Amen. That he walked by and he saw and he had a burden for this man. Amen. You can't have a burden for everybody, but you can have a burden for somebody. Amen. You can have somebody on your heart that God put on your heart. Now, as a pastor, I have to pray for everybody. Amen. I was praying this morning. You know, not every prayer, but most prayers, I try to get, you know, folks' names in there. You know, and I can't remember everybody's name. It took me a while to remember Lenore and Paris, but he came back to me. It came back to me, so, you know. Sometimes you know, you know, what I'm talking about this great. Yeah, you, you think he said, "I know it's a brown. I know it's another brown." I thought in Arizona, what's their name? <laughs> it took me a while this morning, but you, you remember, you know, you gotta have a burden for. As a pastor, I got to pray for everybody, but you may not pray for everybody, but you gotta pray for somebody more than yourself and the people that you love. Amen. Because people are dying right now. And they need somebody. Jesus said, I'm trying to get to this message. But he said, you got to come unto me, all you that labor and are heavy laden. And he said, and you'll find rest for yourself. And he said this, he said, take my yoke upon you. Amen. You can't learn of him until you take his yoke upon you. That's why Paul told us, be not unequally yoked together with unbelievers. Because whoever you yoke to, that's who you're going to learn from. So they would take the young ox and they would yoke him to an old ox. And that old ox would teach that young ox how to plow and get accustomed to that yoke. That's why Jeremiah said, we have been unaccustomed to the yoke. That means we haven't put ourselves under your burden long enough to get accustomed to doing things the way you do them. Amen. But when you take his yoke on you, you begin to learn not just his ways, but his spirit begins to take over. His burden begins to take over you. His prayer life begins to take over you. His life begins to come a part of your life. Because you are yoked with Jesus. And you're under his burden. Ain't it sad? Ain't it sad that the burden of most church people is just to earn more money, get better jobs, get better cars. Amen. Ain't that sad? Amen. God calls us to save souls. There's churches you can't just walk into. We had to drive out to Fenton. We was getting something engraved for somebody. I said, honey, Joyce Myers church is on this road. Let's just drive by and look at it. 
When we drove there, the armed guard met us. You can't just drive up to Joyce Myers Church and, and go. I mean, there's a gate and everything. He came out the gate, man. You thought you'd seen the president. He came out the gate and stood there. And I stopped. And I put the car in reverse, started backing up. And he started writing down my license plate. <laughs> and that's, that's church. Lord, have mercy. I say, Lord, help. How are we going to get in there? Churches have concerts with gospel singers. And you got to pay fifty nine ninety five. What if a soul want to come get saved that night? You gonna let them in? Oh, now y'all, you got to come back on Sunday. You can't come in here tonight. We got Yolanda Adams. Lord, have mercy. Amen. But we gotta have a greater burden for souls. Amen. So be in here and pray with us. Amen. I'm telling you something. Prayer is the answer. Is that right, Sister Honey? Prayer is the answer. Amen. And we were raised up on prayer. We were raised up on the foundation. And I teach men, I was trying to teach yesterday, I teach people that even if you ain't saved, pray. Because the Lord hears sinners pray. Yes, he does. Too. Amen. Y'all heard about this testimony. That was powerful. God hears when sinners pray. Even if you don't claim to be saved, you just got some faith in God. And say, Lord, save me. Help me, Jesus. The Lord will help you. Amen. Now, a sinner can't pray to open the eyes of the blind. What that man said was right over there in John 4. But he didn't mean a sinner can't never pray. Amen. The Lord is waiting to hear your prayer. And sometimes the Lord allows you to go through what he allows you to go through to make you pray. Amen. To make you realize, Lord, I ain't been talking to you lately. And I need to get about some business. Oh, hallelujah. And some of y'all that saved right now. Amen. Everybody didn't get saved just skipping in the church. Some people had to be pushed down in the mud to say, come to the Lord, I come to myself now. I realize I need to return to my Father. Those people that really get Bible saved, when you come to the end of yourself and realize, Lord, ain't nothing out here for me. You know, devil keep you out there as long as he make you think there's something out there for you. But if you get to the end of your road and realize God ain't nothing in this world for me. And I don't mean you got to be locked up or whatever, but I'm saying something in your heart comes to the end of yourself and say, Lord, this world ain't for me. Amen. I'm checking out. I'm going into the kingdom of God. Amen. And the Lord calls you out of something. Praise the Lord. That's why we got to have more grace for God to get a hold of people. Uh, Y'all believe Ephesians 2? By grace you're saved. You don't get saved by just making a decision. It's the grace of God that reaches to a man or a woman and say, I'm opening a door for you to let go of the world. And you know the world is killing you. You know ain't nothing but death out there. But sometimes we just stay out there because that's what we're used to. Amen. But when you let go and say, Lord, I'm going to use my faith and I'm going to reach out to Jesus and you'll find you pass, the Bible say, from death unto life. Is that how it works? Amen. And it's a door of faith. Praise the Lord. Grace through faith. Is that what Ephesians yes. said? So we're praying. That when we get in here and pray, what we're doing is we're praying down. Jesus said, pray, Lord, let your kingdom come. Amen. When we get in here and pray, you're praying the grace of God into these services. You're praying the grace of God into people's lives. When the devil's trying to destroy them, you're doing spiritual warfare when you can't even see what you're doing. Prayer always works. Don't ever think that prayer don't work. Prayer changes things. Sister Hunter was saying, prayer does something. Every time you get on your knees in faith and connect with your father, something is happening in the spirit that you can't see. And every time you don't pray, something is happening that you can't see. Amen. The devil is working when the church goes to sleep. Amen. Is that what Jesus said? While men slept. The enemy came and so turns among the wheat. Yes. The church has been asleep, but Paul said it's time to awake out of slumber. Yes. For now is our salvation nearer than when we believe. If I stop talking, I can start preaching. <laughs> Amen. Oh, but praise the Lord. Let's praise the Lord one more time. Put your hands together. I mean, people get tired of me. My pastor used to say that all the time. I didn't feel that way. I don't know what in the world he's talking about. I can sit here all day and listen. But I found out there were some folks that couldn't sit there all day and listen. <laughs> some, some people say, take your time. And other people say, what time are you stopping? Hallelujah, <laughs> Jesus. I never knew what he was talking about until I started standing up here. 
Amen. Now I got the revelation. I used to think, bro, was are crazy. What you mean? I'm tired of you. I ain't tired of you. Keep talking, man. Praise the Lord. And then I had to stand up here. Oh, hallelujah, Jesus. Man, everybody don't love the Lord like some people love the Lord. Some people go to church, they're just ready to get out. Amen. I never understood that, but I, I guess that's true. Amen. I tell you, we need a revival. Me and my wife was talking. I'm trying to shut up. I really am. Me and my wife was talking yesterday. I said, honey, if God don't send us revival, this church ain't going to make it. Oh, it's coming. This church ain't going to make it if God don't send us revival. We need something that's going to shake men and women and wake people up. Because people are losing their spiritual burden. People are losing their spiritual burden. So we got to have revival. I mean, we just have to have it. We just have to have it. So y'all pray with us when we come in here this week that Lord send us a little revival. Even if you don't send us the big revival, one man pray, God give us a little revival. Amen. Won't you satisfy, be satisfied with a mini revival? <laughs> so if you can't have the whole thing, I'll take a little bit. Maybe you can't have the whole cake, but I'll take a slice. Amen. Praise the Lord. Let's go to these scriptures. I'm going to try to talk to you and get out your way. Because we do want you to be here tomorrow. Amen. At noon, if you can, at 6 p.m., if you can. And we're only praying an hour. We're not praying three hours. Sometime in the country, we pray three hours. But, amen. You can pray an hour. And can't you? Somebody else say amen. amen. <laughs> say amen by faith. Amen. <laughs> you can pray an hour. That's what Jesus, that's all he asked of him was an hour. Say, could you watch with me one hour? So get here on time. And we're going to talk to you just a little bit. And it may not seem we're talking about prayer, but we are today. Yeah. Romans 12, verse 1 and 2. I beseech you, brethren, therefore, brethren, by the mercies of God, that you give God your body as a present. Present your bodies. Everybody giving presents this time of year, ain't it? Yeah. Whose birthday is it supposed to be? Jesus. Where is his present? What y'all what y'all giving Jesus for Christmas? For oh, holiday. Man, I get plenty mad if it's my birthday and you give Brother Kirkwood a present, Sister Debbie a present, Sister Auntie a present, and you don't give me no present on my birthday. And, well, man, you're gonna have a problem. I beseech you, therefore, brethren, by the mercies of God, that you present your bodies a living sacrifice, holy. Acceptable unto God, which is your reasonable service. Is that what it say? And be not conformed to this world, but be ye transformed by the renewing of your mind, that you may prove what is that good and acceptable and perfect will of God. Now let's back up to uh, the sixth chapter of Romans. Romans 6, and here we'll start reading at Verse 12, let not sin therefore reign in your mortal body that you should obey it in the lust thereof. Neither yield ye your members as instruments of unrighteousness unto sin, but yield yourselves unto God as those that are alive from the dead and your members as instruments of righteousness unto God. For sin shall not have dominion over you, for you are not under the law, but under grace. What then shall we sin because we are not under the law, but under grace? God forbid, know ye not that to whom you yield yourselves servants to obey, his servants ye are to whom you obey, whether of sin unto death or of obedience unto righteousness. But God be thanked that you were the servants of sin, but you have obeyed from the heart that form of doctrine which was delivered you being then made free from sin you became the servants of righteousness I speak after the manner of men because of the infirmity of your flesh for as you have yielded your members servants to uncleanness and to iniquity unto iniquity even so now yield your members servants to righteousness unto holiness. Father, thank you for these scriptures on the day. Lord, by these things men live. 
are taking heed to this word of God and we ask you to give us a little manna from heaven that you would bless this bread and this living water, this wine on today. Lord, let it be nourishment to our inner man by the Holy Ghost. In Jesus' name, amen. Yield your members. Yield your members. First Corinthians, the sixth chapter. 1 Corinthians 6 and verse 15. Know ye not that your bodies are the members of Christ? Shall I then take the members of Christ and make them the members of an harlot? God forbid. What know ye not that he which is joined to an harlot is one body? For two, saith he, shall be one flesh. But he that is joined unto the Lord is one spirit. Flee fornication. Every sin that a man doeth is without the body. But he that commit fornication sinneth against his own body. What know ye not that your body is the temple of the Holy Ghost which is in you, which you have of God, and ye are not your own, but ye are bought with a price. Therefore glorify God in your body and in your spirit, which are God's. Now, this scripture right here in 1 Corinthians 6 knocks a hole in the head of people that think you can serve God in your heart only, that think you can just love God in your heart. And, and I believe there are some people that in their heart, you know, love God as far as we have human understanding to know it. I know Jesus said, if you love me, keep my commandments. You know, and I know a lot of people trip over that, but I don't, and I ain't gonna fight with nobody over it. But I don't think that means that if you don't keep my man commandments, you don't love me. And a lot of people interpret it that way, and that's all right if you want to do that. But this first Corinthians here knocks a hole in the head of people that think that you can serve God with just in your heart and then do what you want with your body. But the Bible says that we're gonna all stand before the judgment seat of Christ. And we're going to give an account of the deeds we've done where at? In our, in our bodies. You know, so it ain't just what's in your heart. You're going to have to answer to God for what you did with your body. And Paul begins to say here that you're not your own. You're bought with a price. And he said you got to glorify God, amen, in your body and in your spirit, which are God's. You can't just love God with your heart and don't move. You got to. You got faith and you got believing in your heart. And the Bible says you have to believe to the saving of your soul. Don't stop believing, but believe until you get saved. Amen. Believe, amen, until God does a work in your heart. Don't, 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 don't stop coming to church. Don't stop praying. But keep believing God. You know, I came to church for more than two years before the Lord saved me. You know, and I, I, don't, I didn't even think I was listening, you know, to what was being said up there. But somehow that word found a little crack in my armor and found its way into my heart. And I began to believe and didn't know that salvation was for me. I mean, I, I knew it up here. You know, you can believe in your mind, but until you believe in your heart, you ain't going to get nothing done. The Bible says, with the heart, man believes unto righteousness. And a lot of people can't get nowhere with God because they believe it in their mind, but it ain't got down to their heart yet. You got to let that faith get down to your heart. They believe that God will move for somebody. God will save somebody. God will fill somebody with the Holy Ghost. But when it get in your heart, you believe God will do that for me, not just somebody. A lot of people believe that God is doing these things, but you got to believe that God will do it in your own personal life. That's why the Bible says, with the heart, man believes unto salvation. You believe God, you'll give me the Holy Ghost. You'll save me. You'll do in my life what you've done in somebody else is like that I could have and I didn't know I could have this. I knew that people had it in the church. I saw how y'all acted, how y'all behaved, how you live for God. I didn't see happy people till I came to church. <laughs> there used to be happy people in church. Now I come in and y'all be smiling. I said, oh my Lord. Everybody in my circle was drunkards. 
You know, they get out them card tables on Friday and Saturday night and play cards and pass around cigarettes and them funny little cigarettes. Amen. And have a beer and a gin and, they, and they whatever, orange juice, gin and orange juice, that's what it was, and cold beer and cool cigarettes. And they sit around. We, they send us kids up to bed. And about 2 in the morning, somebody was fighting. Yeah. Yeah. Cussing and, and blankety, blankety, blank, blank, blank. And they wake all us kids up. And that's just the life we live. That's just how, And everybody was miserable all the time until they got something in them. And then they was a little bit something. But, but when they didn't have nothing in them, they was miserable. They was crankety. And so when I came to church and people were smiling, I'm like, oh, what kind of people is this? <laughs> And then I start hearing a word, and then I start saw y'all flopping around like fish and rolling in the floors. And I'm thinking this is better than suffering. Oh my God, this is better than anything on TV and singing. And my aunt Rosemary was singing. I want to come hear her singing. Man, this is the best show going. But then after two years of just sitting, hey Amen. Something began to get not just in my mind, but something filtered down in my heart. And my heart began to believe. Something opened up on the inside of me and said, give me also this water. Give me also this bread. And my heart began to believe, hey amen, that I could have what I've been looking at for two years. And it wasn't just for them and her and him. It was for me also. Something personalize that word in my heart. But I had to go beyond just believing in my heart. I had to give him my body. I had to say, Jesus, because I didn't want to. Man, I ain't going up there flopping around like a fish like these crazy people. But something in my heart just kept pulling at me. God, I want this. God, I want this. Oh, you ever get hungry for God? God, I want this. Just kept pulling. But I didn't want to go up there because if that man lay hands on me, I'm going to fall on the floor like everybody else. I don't do all that. The devil said, they're going to laugh at you. Say, remember how y'all used to sit by? And that's all we did, man. We just laughed at folks. Man, we had a big old running joke back in the 70s. Hey, Amen. Sister Hunter fell down and her dress flew up. We could see her underwear. We just talking like <laughs> that was before we had sheets on page. <laughs> I'm sorry, Sister Hunter. I'm always talking. But before, <laughs> before grand, I, I guess they didn't have no sheets. <laughs> and us kids, man, we just talked about that for years. Oh, my Lord. And the devil said, you don't want to go up there because they're going to be talking about you. And they're going to be laughing at you like you laughed at everybody else. Amen. But when you get hungry, oh, hallelujah, you can hold out for only so long. When that heart start believing that there's living bread up there. And I don't know how, but somehow I got to get it. Amen. And, yo, my heart began to pull at me. And I resisted and I resisted until one Wednesday night. I couldn't resist no more. Amen. So not only. And God had already had a hold of my heart. My pastor said that my face would light up while the word was being preached. I didn't even know my face was lighting up. I didn't even know I was enjoying the word. I didn't even know I was feasting off the word. But he said he saw my face lighting up. Amen. So God was in my heart. I was believing in my heart. But I had to give him my body. Oh, hallelujah. You can't just serve God in your heart. He you wants your body. Huh? He does. Let's go with it. You know, one prophet said, let us lift up our hearts with our hands. Yes. Amen. Give them everything. Yes. Matthew 21. Yes. I'm trying to be quiet. Be very, very quiet. I used to love that. Folks used to love that scripture in the 80s. The Lord is in his holy temple. Let all the earth be silent before him. We used to make a whole lot of noise. Matthew 21. Let's start here at verse 33. Here another parable. There was a certain householder which planted a vineyard and hedged it round about and did a wine press in it and built a tower and let it or rent it out to husbandmen and went into a far country. And when the time of the fruit drew near, he sent his servants to the husband that they might receive the fruits of it. And the husbandman took his servants and beat one, killed another, and stoned another. Again he sent other servants more than the first. 
and they did unto them likewise. But last of all, he sent unto them his son, saying, They will reverence my son. But when the husbandmen saw the son, they said among themselves, This is the heir. Come, let us kill him, and let us seize upon his inheritance. And they called him, and cast him out of the vineyard, and slew him. When the Lord thereof of the vineyard cometh, what will he do unto those husbands? They say unto him, he will miserably destroy those wicked men and will let out his vineyard unto other husbandmen which shall render him the fruit in their season. What is he saying? He's saying the steward has to give to the owner that which belongs to the owner. What are you saying, Pastor? I'm saying you're not your own. You're bought with a price. Yes, Amen. That that body you have doesn't belong to you. You are just a steward of that body. Amen. Amen. Lord wants us to take care of our bodies. We've been doing a poor job. My wife was telling me this morning how I need to eat healthier. Praise the Lord. So we're going to work on that. But you got to do a good job taking care of this body. Don't put tobacco in it. Don't put fentanyl in it. Fentanyl, fentanyl, what is it? Killing folks left and right like flies. Don't put marijuana in it. Don't put cocaine in it. Amen. Take care of it, and then give it to God, just like here in this Matthew, render to him the fruit. That's why the Bible says, let's give him the calves of our lips. Let's render to him the fruit. When God, amen, comes to you, he wants you to glorify him in your body. That means, Lord, I give myself to you, not just my heart. But I want to give you that which rightfully belongs to you. Your body, uh, people take God for granted. But when he cuts your breath off, you're going to realize how important God is. When he tells you this is your last heartbeat, you're going to wish you had done better. You, this body belongs to God. I'm talking about saved and unsaved. You belong to somebody. You, the Bible says you've been bought with a price. Therefore glorify God in your body and in your spirit, which are God's. You got to yield to God your members. You got to give him your body, not just your heart. He wants your body. Yes, he does. Doing what you want with your own body. That ain't your body. You can't go out here and treat that body like you want to treat it. That's why he said the body is not for fornication, but for the Lord. Take Sister Brown to preach on fornication. That ain't what your body was made for. Your body wasn't made just to go out and party. Your body was made for the glory of God. Your mouth was made to praise God. Your hands were made to serve God. Your feet were made to be prepared to carry the gospel. None of you belongs to you. It all belongs to him. You are just a steward. So the Bible says, give him what he wants in his season. But something the old folks used to teach us, delayed obedience is still disobedient. It is. Oh, hallelujah. Yes, it is. I'll do it later. The Lord said a man had two sons. He told the both, he said, go to work today in my vineyard. Is that what he said? Yes. The first one said, I go, sir, and went not. The second one said, I ain't going nowhere, but later he repented and went to work. Jesus said, whither of them twain did the will of their father? They said, the latter. He said, so you got to recognize that even if you say, God, I'm going to do it later, that's still disobedience. Yes, sir. When the Lord say fast, it's time to fast. Amen. Well, I'm going to get down where we L-I-V-E. When the Lord says it's time to pray, he wake you up at 3 o'clock. You can't say, I'm going to pray later at 5. You got to obey him when he says so. You cannot choose when the Lord of the vineyard receives the fruit. He determines when the season is. So when he says it's time to pray, when he says it's time to fast, when he says it's time to read the Bible, and he calls you to that, and you say, I'll do it later, you are still a disobedient servant. Because delayed obedience is still disobedience. You've got to give God your members. Romans 6. Can I pastor for a few minutes? Yeah. We screamed and hollered last week. We're going to talk today. <laughs> Romans 6 again. Some folks say, Pastor, how can I give God my body? I don't know how. I'm going to teach you how. Now, when I first got saved, 
First of all, Sister Auntie came to me and she said, uh, have you received the Holy Ghost? I didn't know what the Holy Ghost was. I was hearing the man up there talking, but I didn't know what he was saying. And if I heard the Holy Ghost, I didn't know what it was. I didn't know who Jesus was, God. You know, so I didn't know nothing about that. But she said the Holy Ghost. And something quickened in my heart. I need this Holy Ghost. Yeah. And I started seeking it. And then after I had got the Holy Ghost, then she came to me a few months later after that. And she said, I noticed you don't move like the other young men. Why is this old lady watching me all the time in church? <laughs> she said, I noticed you don't move like the other young men. And I noticed that during the song service, everybody, y'all be just flopping around. I just stood there. <laughs> I didn't know. I did not know I was supposed to be moving. Even though I knew y'all was moving, I didn't know that I wasn't moving. <laughs> Some of y'all better bear witness to this. Amen. I did not know that I wasn't praising God. Because in my little heart, I was happy. I was glad. I'm saved. I got the Holy Ghost now. Amen. So when they said stand, I stood. <laughs> <laughs> when it said sin, I sat. <laughs> but other than that, I didn't do nothing. Hallelujah. So she told me that. And she said, I noticed you don't move like the other. So I started. <laughs> I started moving my feet. Hallelujah. And then it became, you remember since probably that song said, yeah, I'll never forget it. It was Sunday. And I had gone to pay less. This is in the 1980s. And there's a reason they called them pay less, but right now, you know what I'm talking about. And I got these shoes that had a plastic bottom on them. You know, and that spray painted wood would make it look like it. But when the wood wore off, it wasn't nothing but gray underneath. And I had on my brand new pay less shoes. And Sister Patty said, somebody come up here and kick the devil. And I kicked with this foot, and this foot came with, and I landed on my best part. <laughs> <laughs> but I just kept on moving. Amen. But sometimes we don't stand and do it. You got to do something. When the preacher say clap your hands or the song leader says clap your hands or the song leader say come kick the devil or somebody give God a praise or somebody run around the church. You can't just stand there and love him in your heart. You got to say, God, even though I don't feel it, I'm going to give you my members because this body belongs to you. Whether I feel it or not, I'm going to clap my hands. They say, raise your hands, God. So here my hands are. <laughs> we don't want to give God our body. We want to be dignified. But you got to leave. You got to leave your dignity out the front door and say, I'll come here to get some. When you go to the hospital and that doctor say, raise that leg. Oh, how I've been leave that one alone. Praise the Lord. <laughs> they say, let me check you out. <laughs> Amen. But this is a hospital. And the Lord said, raise that arm. I want to check you out. Amen. Pick up your feet. I want to bless you. I want to put something on the inside of you. But I need more than just your heart. I need your members. You got to do it when you don't feel it. And when you yield that obedience, does something to God. When God see your heart, amen, won't you? Even if you don't feel like it. God, even if I don't feel like it, I want to feel like it. Even if I don't feel what they feel, I want to feel what they feel. So I'm going to start off by yielding my members. Oh, how it is. You got to pray when you don't feel like praying. Let's go back here to this Romans 6. How do you do that, Pastor? I'll tell you how you do it. I'll tell you how you do it. Verse 19. I speak after the manner of men because your flesh is so sick and so weak. The spirit is willing, but your flesh is weak. I said, what does that mean, Pastor? I ain't weak. When it comes to serving God, the flesh is weak. It is. Huh? So how do you yield your members? Paul's got three words here. As you have. Oh, hallelujah. How did you get a smoking habit before you got saved? You didn't enjoy it the first time you did it. You thought you was going to die. You turned green. Start coughing up a lung. Oh, my Lord. How can they enjoy this? But everybody around you was doing it. And you didn't want to stick out. So what you did was you puffed on that cigarette. And please, God, don't let me die to you. Oh, my God, this is killing me. But you kept on yielding yourself to it. Amen. You did that for a month or two. Next thing you know, you got to have it. You can light it up without even thinking about it. That's true. Yeah. How'd you start drinking? First time you tasted gin, it burned all the way down. 
Did it, Sister Hunt? All the way down. But you kept on drinking it, didn't you? And then eventually it stopped burning then. <laughs> and then eventually you can have it, and next thing you know, you drink it before the sun go down. You know, you used to have a thing in the world you're not supposed to drink. That's why they said these can't be drunk. It ain't nothing but the third hour of the day because folks didn't drink in the morning. They drank in the evening. But you get a good habit going, and you start getting drunk before the third hour of the day. Even though you didn't like it when you first started it, you kept yielding your members to it until your body got so used to it that spirit of it got a hold of you. That cigarette, that alcohol, that drug, those are demons. And those demons will get a hold of you and they'll drive you until you get to the point where you say, I'm going to stop smoking. And that demon say, no, you ain't need it. Right. Yeah, it, it was, oh, <laughs> It's a fight. Go ahead, Sister Reed. Sister Reed's going to be honest about it. Your, you, your mind say, I'm going to stop drinking, but that devil say, no, you ain't either. Uh -huh. huh? And that devil will drive you to that yoke it broke off you. And that's what happened to you when you got in sin. The Bible spoke to those in Revelation that have not known the depths of Satan. So you start off with a little shallow Satan, but you keep on going and you get down to the depths of it. Amen. And that's how you do it for sin. So Paul said, as you have yielded your members unto iniquity, unto iniquity, that means a little sin leads to more sin, leads to more sin. He said, even so now, yield your members as in instruments of righteousness under holiness. That means if you give yourself to God and do what you know is right, amen, righteousness is on the outside, but holiness comes from the inside. He said if you do what's right on the outside, what's right on the inside will begin to get a hold of you if you give him your member. And he said, yield your members as an instrument. Y'all hear that organ right now? You don't hear it? Uh -uh. You know why you don't hear it? Because it ain't doing nothing. <laughs> huh? See, Paul told us in Philippians, we were created in Ephesians, I'm sorry, unto good works. Yeah. That the works were finished from the foundation of the world. Yeah. So when you give God your body, you're saying, Lord, I'm just an instrument. What did Paul say in Galatians 2? He said, I am crucified with Christ. Nevertheless, I you live. Yet not I, Brother Kirkwood. He said, but Christ lives in me. And the life which I now live in the flesh, I only live it one way. By the faith of the Son of God who loved me and gave himself for me. Paul said in another place, he said, I am what I am by the grace of God. He said, I live it more abundantly than they all. Yet it wasn't me, but it was the grace of God that was with me. What does he say? He said, that I'm just an organ that can't do nothing unless the Lord get on me and start playing me. I'm just a guitar that won't make a sound unless the Lord pick it up and start strumming the string. So the Lord say, yield your member as an instrument. That means if I give myself over to you, your spirit is going to take over and it's going to start making some beautiful music out of my life if I give myself to you. Yes, Lord. But I've got to yield my members as an instrument. Here I am, God. I don't have nothing in me except what you put in me. There's nothing that can come out of me unless you, by your spirit, make something out of it. But I'm willing to be used. I'm willing to play. I'm willing to be made music out of it. So I'm going to yield my members as an instrument. Yes. See, a lot of people say, God, I can't speak in tongues. I don't know how. No, 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 there's no how. Unless you're in one of these churches where they pull you to side and teach you how. You ain't got to be scared of yielding your tongue. The devil tell you, you ain't doing nothing but thinking the word. Everything that comes out of your mouth, even when you're speaking in tongues, it comes through your spirit first. Yes, it does. See, we think that God just takes on. Blah, 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 blah. I ain't saying that that can't happen. What I'm saying is your spirit prays for. Paul said, if I pray in an unknown tongue, he says, it's my spirit that's praying. My spirit is the one doing the praying, but my body is just an instrument that the spirit is using. And that sound that I'm making is coming through that instrument by the spirit that's on the inside. That's why he said the spirit of God bears witness with our spirit that we are the sons of God. So God does get in your heart and your spirit, but you got to yield your members. He ain't going to make you speak in tongues. You got to open your mouth and say, when you feel something in the service, you got to lift your hands and say, hallelujah. 
They will say, see, you don't feel nothing. Ain't nothing happening. Something is happening. You're saying, Lord, here's an instrument. You're using that instrument. You're using that instrument. If you're using that instrument over there, here's an instrument right here. Here I am, Lord. I'm lifting my hand. I'm saying, hallelujah. I'm picking up my feet. Like they say, I don't feel nothing, God. Amen. But it's my obedience. And I know, amen, that if I obey you, if I do what you're saying, do in the sermon, if I clap my hands and I open my mouth. See, you got to open your mouth. Sometimes people ain't getting nothing because they don't open your mouth. You say, open your mouth and I'll fill it with good things. You got to let God have his way. You got to present your body. You got to say, here it is, God. Take it over. As an instrument, here I am, Lord. I tried it and it didn't work. Keep on trying it. Amen. Let's go over to 1 Corinthians 6. I ain't going to hold y'all long. I want people to come in here and pray with me this week. I said, I can't do it, Pastor. I tried praying. It don't work. Hey, man, I talked about the body. Let me go back to the spirit now. You got to put your spirit in. Hey, man, when you yield in your body, you got to put something in. In the world, they got a saying. They say, you got to dance like nobody's watching. Y'all ain't never heard that, have you? Hey, man, you got to put everything you got into it. You got to sing. You know how y'all sing when you by yourself in the shower? That's how you sing when you come to church. When you're in the shower, you just all out there. Sing at the top of your love. Pray, pray, pray God, remove all my. You come to church, praise the Lord. Give him all the blessings. Lord. You won't put nothing in it. Amen. You want to be soft with it. You want to be easy with it. You don't want to put yourself out there. You don't want to be embarrassed. Amen. But when you don't get the kingdom of God, you got to despise the shame. You got to tell the devil, I don't care. Amen. What I look like, what I sound like. See, you want to sound pretty. You ain't got to sound pretty. You just got to be an instrument. Amen. My piano may be out of tune, but I'm still going to play it. Amen. I don't care what you sound like. The Lord is looking for yielded instruments. You got to despise the shame. Say, God, I'm just going to put myself out. You know how I got saved that Wednesday night? Hey, Amen. Devil just kept talking to me. He said, they're going to laugh at you. <laughs> and I knew they were going to laugh at me. The whole time, Nene, you know how I was back in the 80s. Come on now, me and you, we know. Hey, amen. The whole time walking up that aisle, I could feel, hey, amen, Pookie and Ricky's eyes on me. Because I didn't tell them I was going up. But we just call, and I jumped up. And the devil said, they're watching you right now. You can feel them looking at you. And I can feel their eyes on the back of my neck. And, and oh, my God, what am I doing? Oh, my God, I'm going to flop around like a fish. And I'm, I'm going to be embarrassed. And they're going to laugh at me. But my hunger said, I don't care. My heart said, I don't care. My soul, my spirit was yearning for something. I said, I don't care. You got to despise the shame. You got to say, I don't care if they laugh at me. I don't care if they I'm telling you what, there's people down in the welfare line and the unemployment office and the food stamp line. They don't care if you talk about them. There's people in front of you in the grocery store. You may be looking down a little nose, but they'll whip out that food stamp card like a big dog. <laughs> and now it looked like a credit card. But when I was a kid, it was green money. No, it wasn't. It was blue. And it was red. It was yellow. Amen. People didn't care. Some people, some people like my wife. She was willing to starve to death before she went to get food stamp. And she would have if she didn't have a roommate. No, she wouldn't because the Lord would have made a way. But the roommate back then, the roommate got food stamps for her. But you know, there's other people, man, they would whip out their little book and turn out their money like it wasn't nothing. They didn't care. Why? Because they was hungry. They need something for their body. But what about when you come to the kingdom of God? Why is all this pride in here? Why is all this dignity and self-respect? I'm going to yield my members and I'm going to keep yielding to the Holy Ghost. Get a hold of me. I'm going to keep opening my mouth to pray until prayer get a hold of me. Maybe I don't feel like praying, but I'm going to bring it in here and I'm going to put my heart in it. I'm going to put my spirit in it. I'm not just going to pray it with my mouth. I'm going to put something in it. This is why prayer don't work for some people. For you are bought with a price, 1 Corinthians 6 and 20. Therefore, because the Lord owns your body, that's what therefore means. Glorify God. Now, I already brought you along with the body. Let's get back to the spirit. Glorify God in your body and in your spirit, which are God's. That means you got to put something in the praise in God. That means you got to put something in the prayer. Even if you don't feel like praying, open your mouth anyhow. Come on, say, Pastor, you pray all the time. I don't feel like praying. 
People, they not feel like praying just because I call prayer. I pray because I'm obedient and this body belongs to him. And then when I get in prayer, I'm going to open my mouth while I feel anything. And people waiting on something to feel something and something take you over. It ain't going to take you over unless you yield your member. Unless you say, God, here I am. I'm trying to pray. I don't know how to pray, but here I am. What am I saying? I don't know what I'm saying. I'm saying what they're saying. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. God, help me bless the potato chip. Something. You got to open your mouth and talk to God when you're in prayer. That's why the devil say, don't go to that prayer this when you don't never feel nothing when you go. That's because you don't never put nothing in. Amen. You go to that grocery store and keep walking by the bubble gum machine expecting something to fall out. It ain't going to fall out till you put something. Do they still have bubble gum machines? Yes. They don't? Yes, they do. <laughs> they used to. They ain't nothing going to fall out just because you walk by. You got to put something in it. People come to the house of God, don't put nothing in it, water away, ain't nothing falling out. You got to come in and you got to offer God something. You got to get in and you got to open your mouth and say, help me, Jesus. I don't know how to pray. See, a lot of times we compare ourselves among ourselves, and because I can't pray like Sister Grady or Sister Auntie or Sister Debbie, I ain't going to open my mouth. God ain't interested in you sounding like them. Man, they've had decades of experience. He wants you to just say, help me, Jesus. I don't know what else to pray, but help me, Jesus. Here I am. My hunger, my heart is yearning. Something is crying out on the inside of me, and I don't even know how to pray. Amen. He can't be like that man in Luke 18. That big old Pharisee, he praying big old prayer, but that little prayer, that little publican just put his hand down, and he wouldn't know how to pray, but he said, Lord, be merciful to me a sinner. What did he do? He opened his mouth and said something, and the Bible said he went to his house justified rather than the other. God ain't comparing you to somebody else. He wants you to give your body to him, and that means opening your mouth. Yes. Yes. I don't want to pray, guys. I just can't. Yes, you can. Oh, yeah. You know how to ask all change when you go to the Jiffy Lube. You don't just pull in the Jiffy Lube and say, well, they know what I want. <laughs> <laughs> you know what? They're going to give you the $159 oil change and say, you didn't say nothing. You got to open your mouth to say something. Ain't that right, Sister Dave? Amen. So David went to the office with somebody and they were ripping up down one side of the other. And I gave her advice previously. I said, Sister David, but women know his people. Don't say nothing. Hold your peace. God gonna fight for you. So she went in there and she listened to what I said. And this person was ripping up one down, down the other. Amen. When they got through ripping up, Brother Will ripped her up. <laughs> so, and she, and she, she said, Brother Will, I'm innocent. He said, You didn't say nothing. So who knew that at 16 years old, I didn't know what I was talking about when I gave people marriage. <laughs> I didn't know what I was talking about. You, you got to say something. Amen. When you go to McDonald's, you don't just pull up to the clown's mouth and say, they'll figure out what I want. You got to ask. The Bible says you have not. <laughs> you got to open your mouth and say something. Amen. Lord, this is what I want. I don't know how to ask for it. Don't try to sound like nobody else, but talk to God. Open your mouth and say, God, I don't know what to pray for. I don't know how to pray like these other people, but I want something. I need something. Now, I'm going to tell you something else. One of the biggest mistakes people make in praying is trying to sound a certain way. It ain't how you sound. It's the sincerity of your heart. You may just be talking like you're talking to a telemarketer on the phone, but your heart is saying, Lord, please help me. Lord, be merciful to me. What are you doing? You're yielding your members. You're opening your mouth. And you're saying, and God will teach you how to pray just from that little bitty prayer. Amen. That's how I got filled with the Holy Ghost. I could recognize because I was begging for it and begging for it. And my pastor stopped me in one prayer line. I was in every prayer line. Not every other. Not every once in every prayer line. Give me the Holy Ghost. And he stopped me one time because I would get out the prayer line, come over, just scream and holler. Scream and holler. It wasn't my faith. I was yielding my members, but my spirit wasn't. Then, amen. So he told me one day, he stopped the prayer line and said, Brother Michael, you got the Holy Ghost if you believe it. And I stopped begging God for it and stopped thanking God for it. And I was going in prayer every day, two, three times a day, and come to church. Thank you, Jesus, for the Holy Ghost. I just kept opening my mouth. Thank you, Jesus, for the Holy Ghost. Amen. I didn't know what else to pray. I didn't know how to pray. The spirit of prayer wasn't in me. But I would yield my members and say, Thank you, Jesus, for the Holy Ghost. Thank you for feeling me. And one Wednesday night, amen, my mouth started going and 
tongues started coming out. It wasn't the whole voice, but it was enough for me to believe that the Holy Ghost had come, and I began to yield my members, and I was getting more prayer, and I would yield to that speaking in tongues just a little bit more, and it began to grow and grow. Jesus said, out of your belly shall flow rivers of living water. It comes out of your mouth as you open your mouth. Let's go over here to James. I want to put something in him. I don't feel nothing. You start yielding your members and you will. Put your spirit in. Huh? James. Look at this last verse of chapter 2. Paul said, I serve God with my spirit. For as the body without the spirit is what? So faith without what? Works is dead also. You got to put something with it. You ain't got to be like nobody else. But you got to yield God your members. And it may just be a simple, help me, Lord. Help me, Jesus. I don't know how to pray, but I want to pray. I heard the pastor say, we're praying this week, and I'm trying, Lord, help me. And I'm going to tell you something about the Lord. I'm going to tell you something about the Lord. Let you in on a secret. He'll withhold himself from you until you get desperate. True. That's what I'm talking about. You don't get it as soon as you ask for it. That's why he told him in the book of Acts. He said, go wait for it. He didn't say it's going to happen the first day you go. And he didn't tell them how long to wait. They didn't know how long they was going to be in that upper room. But something in their heart said, I'm going to wait for him until he comes. He spent 40 days talking to them about the Holy Ghost. And they said, man, we're going to wait on this until he comes. When you want it, you'll get hungry. And somebody say, well, I tried it, but it didn't work, so I stopped. You wasn't hungry. When you're hungry, you'll try it. It don't work. You'll come back and try it again. It don't work. You'll come back and try it again. At first, you don't succeed. Try, try again. And you'll keep on coming. And the more you come and it seems like God ain't giving it to you, the hungrier you get. The more you want. Everybody talking real talk right here. Just how the, the longer it seems like God ain't feeling you, the more you want. You don't just walk away and say, oh, them were just solid grapes. Y'all remember Aesop's favor? Uh-uh. Something in your heart say, I still want them grapes. I still want this living water. I still want this wine. Amen. The longer it takes you to get it when you're hungry for God, amen, the hungrier you'll get, the more you want it. To the point where you cannot live without it. That's where God wants to get you. Mm -hmm. To the point where you've got to have it. Yeah, yeah. Right now, people are not seeing God move because he's a side dish. He wants to be your main course. He oh, is yeah. the whole yeah. staff of life. Yeah. Lord was trying to tell us yesterday, he responds to need more than want. Yeah. You may come to God because you want God, but you ain't going to get God until you realize you need God. Yeah. I've got to have it. I just can't have it. Some people just got God as a hobby or a side dish. Uh-uh. When you get hungry enough, the Lord said, then shall you find me when you have sought for me with all your heart. I've got to have the kingdom of God. Put your spirit in it. Romans 12. Some people start yielding their body, but they don't ever put their spirit in it. You got to give God your whole heart. Put something in I beseech you, therefore, brother, by the mercies of God, that you present your body. Give it to him. Lord, this used to be mine. I used to do with it what I wanted. But as I have yielded my members as instruments to iniquity, unto iniquity, and I got worse and worse every year, now I'm yielding my body as instruments of righteousness unto holy. Present your body. A living sacrifice. What does that sacrifice mean? That means that it may cost you something. It may be beyond your comfort zone, but he wants some life in it. I want you to push something in it. Is that right? Yeah. As a body without the spirit is dead, faith without works is dead. Put some life in it. Amen. Amen. Open your mouth. Amen. You ain't got to be the loudest person in the church, but talk to God. <laughs> I know somebody that talk a hole in your head. My pastor, you say you talk so much, you talk in your sleep. But when they come to prayer, they ain't got nothing to say. 
And you say you love the Lord. You ain't got nothing to say to him. Talk to me. I mean, I, I mean, this person, they'll keep you on the phone, pass you on. They'll sit at your house, pass you on the talk. You don't want to talk no more. They'll just keep that carrying the whole conversation all by themselves. You yawning, looking at your wife, and they still talking. I blah, 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 blah. But when you come to prayer, you ain't got nothing to say. Hey, Amen. I'm going to do most of my talking to the one that can do something about what I'm talking about. Give him your members. A living sacrifice. Holy, acceptable unto God, which is what kind of service? Reasonable. Reasonable. Oh, that's far-fetched. It ain't far-fetched. This makes sense. Yes. You know, it's in the book of Acts that Paul reasoned with them, a faith, temperance, and a judgment to come. Paul said, be ready to give an answer to every man that asks you a reason of the whole. This may seem like craziness, but this is reasonable right here, what we do. To give God what belongs to him, to give Jesus what he purchased with his own blood, that's reasonable. It's not unreasonable. It is your reasonable service. Let's go over to 2 Corinthians. Pastor, you sure if I give him my body, he'll take it? Not 2 Corinthians, 2 Chronicles. Yes, he's looking. You see these folks running around St. Louis like they're running around down there. I can't find out people out begging. I can't find a job. In every other corner, they got they begging. They, they're practically tackling people on the streets, dragging them in. Please work. And folks out here act like they can't find a job. Ain't no such a lie. You don't want a job. If you want a job, so I say, I'm looking for something in a CEO position. <laughs> Y'all take the CDW position, chief, chief dishwasher. God is looking for vessels. Amen. He's wanting somebody. Moses said, I'll prepare him a habitation. He's my God. He's looking for vessels. If you give him what he wants, he'll take possession of it. You present your body as an instrument, he'll make music out of it. You yield your member, he'll take over. Second Corinthians, I'm closing. Thank y'all for y'all attention. Yeah. What Sister Rita said. Second Chronicles. One of those seat books. Y'all better be praying for my brain. I'm telling y'all. Man, I get up here and start preaching that Jonah swallowed the well. Lord is my help. Second Chronicles 16. Let me start here at verse 8. We're not the Ethiopians. You know why the Lord is chewing them out right here? Because they lean to the arm of flesh. He had trusted God previously, but now he is not. He won't take matters in his own hands. So the Lord said, we're not the Ethiopians. And Lubin's a huge host with very many chariots and horsemen. Yet because thou didst rely on the Lord, he delivered them into thine hand. Notice this verse 9. For the eyes of the Lord run to and fro. Man, he's got help warning signs. He's on LinkedIn. He's in the newspaper. He's running ads on the TV. He's doing everything he can to get vessels. For the eyes of the Lord run to and fro throughout the whole earth to show himself strong in the behalf of them whose heart is perfect towards him. Herein thou hast done foolishly. Therefore, from henceforth thou shalt have wars. I didn't really need that last clause. I just want to show you God is looking for vessels. He's looking for people to give him their bodies and he'll give you something real if you will yield to him. Let's pray. Father, we thank you for having a spirit that's reaching to us, that's looking to us, even in the midst of this darkness, even in the midst of this coldness, you're still looking for people that will give their bodies unto you and give their spirits to lift up their hearts with their hands. Lord, teach us in this cold and dark hour to yield our members and present our bodies unto you even in prayer this week Lord this Monday Tuesday and Wednesday Lord we're asking you to help us to pray Lord many don't know how to pray but put it in our heart to draw nigh to God James said if we would draw close to you you would draw close to us put it in our heart this week Lord to, if we don't know how to pray or if we do know how to pray if we don't know how to pray Lord help us to come and let somebody pray and glean from their prayer. If we know how to pray, let us be the one that's gleaned from and help somebody else to pray. But get us in here, Lord, this week. Move for the people, Lord, that's reaching out to you some kind of way. 
Lord, I know you said if we would feel after you, you'd be not far from every one of us. Lord, make it real to every here on today. In Jesus' name, amen. Give the Lord a hand clap for the word. Thank you for your attention this morning.